<laughs> Just finished work for the day. I went upstairs to Rachel's office to see if she was done working for the day as well, and she is not. She's got another meeting. She's got to go to something running late today. And uh, I was telling her what I was about ready to go do, and she asked the question, are you, are you going to film it? <laughs> and I immediately started laughing, and I was like, well, based on the video, that, the last video that we just posted where the tree fell on our fence, and I got into some discussions about work and, and how much work homesteads can be. And, but ultimately what makes, what makes the work worth it all? And today when Rachel came out to do the chores, another tree. <laughs> this is not the same tree from the other day. This is a completely different tree, also a box elder has fallen this time on the fence for the pig pen. The goats are in there now and they're busy eating on it. <laughs> and uh, it's just field fencing. So the tree really caused a lot more damage to what it did to the goat fencing the other day. So that's what I'm gonna work on today. <laughs> try to get this cleaned up, try to get the fencing repaired. Um, I. Basically, the last video that we posted was me cutting up a tree that fell on our fence. So I'm not going to film a whole ton of the cutting portion of what I'm going to be doing. Brought the tractor out here. I still had the chainsaws in it. I haven't put them away yet. So that's what I'm going to work on today. It. Uh, I don't know if this is a test or if it's karma. I don't know. <laughs> You decide. I guess the damage to the fence wasn't really all that bad because these T-post clips that we had on there that were holding the fence must have been loose enough. So when the tree hit, it just kind of slid down. I brought some new clips out. I think if I do that clip, oops, now it's kind of stuck. Now I can, yeah, I'm straighten everything back up. And we can just put a new clip on there. Well, I, I wonder sometimes if we're if we're pressing our luck, giving the goats in here with this fence. I think they could probably jump this fence pretty easy and get out if they really wanted. Oh, somebody was asking about this tool the other day when we were doing the cattle panels trellises for the tomatoes and you kind of like you can loop it on these clips and then you can bend them around pretty easy um, it's just a piece of metal with some holes in it and I think I bought it at tractor supply for like three dollars or something and I wrapped it with some uh, red duct tape just to try to make it a little more visible so I don't lose it in the grass loose now. I might have pulled some staples from somewhere. We'll see if we can tighten it. Seriously, it wasn't recording. All right, I was just talking to you guys for like five minutes, trying to tell you how to how to tighten a fence, and the camera wasn't recording. <laughs> so it's a little bit tighter now because I've already done some of it, but I will show you anyways because if you have fencing for animals on your homestead, field fencing, no climb horse fencing, no climb goat fencing, pig fencing, whatever type of fencing it is, if it gets loose on you, whether a tree falls on it, your animals keep rubbing up against it and they start stretching it out and it gets loose on you. See how it's kind of loose. We can tighten that up a little bit. 
All you need is a pair of pliers, a big, like some lineman pliers like this, or those proper like fence pliers that have the little hook on them for pulling fence staples. Something big, heavy duty that you can really get a good grip on. Um, you start with a panel like this section of squares and at the top you grab it right in the middle and then you twist it like 90 degrees and it puts a little curve s little notch in it and every time you do this as you work your way down each little s that you're doing and putting a twist in it you're shortening your fence by about half an inch each time maybe up to an inch if you can really got some strong torque in your wrists and it'll really tighten things up good I think we can probably do another section down there I'll try to get you a little closer so you can see there we go I think this is uh, kind of loose hopefully we can see good here we focus good oh no the goats coming come and check me out so you take this square here this whole section all the way down Hey, no, don't bite the camera. Hey, stop. <laughs> Grab it right in the middle like this and then twist it 90 degrees. See how it puts that little S curve in it right there? It's basically shortening your fence. And then you work your way down. And if it's still not tight enough for you, just go to the next section over. Do the same thing. You're gonna end up with these funny little S curves in your fence, but nobody will ever notice. If anything, they'll just notice, wow, you got some really tight fences. I lost my pliers somewhere. I don't remember where I put them. I found my cutters in my other piece of clip that I brought out here, but I don't know what I did with my pliers. Maybe I'll have to go back and <laughs> rewatch the video to see where I put them. found them <laughs> so I just got out here I just got done with work oh sorry and uh I we were joking about what we were gonna call this video the title <laughs> <laughs> and I said are you just gonna call it I think she's right again and I should listen to her and I he's like listen to my wife <laughs> and he's like what are you talking about and I'm like do you see all these trees an entire row of like six or seven more trees just leaning over this goat fence that we've been talking about and acknowledging they're gonna fall, they're gonna fall, they're gonna fall. And they're all box elders too. They're all stupid the trees. exact same stupid trees. So I talked to him this morning. I, did you tell him how I came in this morning and introduced you to the issue? No. So I walked in from morning chores and I was like, I really hate to start your day like this. But another tree fell. <laughs> and he's like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and I, I came out here in my pajamas and <laughs> shook my head and went back in the house. <laughs> so I said, well, should we just get a tree company out here and just spend the money to get it, get them all taken down? So that's going to be my project over the next several weeks, probably, because that's how long it takes them to convince them to spend money. <laughs> To convince him to get somebody out here, even if it costs a couple grand, to just take these down. But can't you picture, like this is a really low spot in our property behind the trees. A big, huge weeping willow growing right here that'll cascade and blow over the fence. And it will suck up all the moisture out of this area. So that's my vision. I can see what it's gonna come, become. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and my vision is always, uh, yeah, I don't like spending money and I like trees. I'm liking these trees less and less. I hate these trees. When I have a big tree that's big, it's hard for me to cut it down. Yeah, it is. It's very hard for him to put in the investment and in small and let it get big over time. But we're, if this is our lifetime property, we're going to be here for a long time to see it come to fruition. Yeah. Even if we're 90 walking out here in our walker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go check out my garden. Good job.
Sorry right. I didn't get out here to help you in time. It's okay. I told me you had a meeting. Mm, I did. So something is getting in my... You guys can't see down here. Like today, for the first time ever, something is coming in here digging in my flower bed. Like I pushed down right here, something had dug up underneath the thyme, something's dug right here underneath the sedum. But things are blooming. Oh, I love it. So look at this rose. Let me pick one off for you. Cause he's just about done anyway. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm, I stop and smell the flowers all the time. I have these pretty thingies blooming. I don't know what they are. I'll pop one off and show you. Aren't they pretty? Ooh, this smells peppery. I of course don't remember what I planted. Lavender's all in bloom. I have my first lupins coming out. I'll show you those. Yeah, so the first lupin is about to bloom. Uh, my creeping uh, phlox are blooming. And back here, The asters are blooming. Uh, all the mountain sage or meadow sage, whatever you want to call it, is blooming along the fence. My morning glories that I started from seed in the house are starting to climb up the trellis. Just all kinds of fun stuff. So this is really taking off. Everything's really like this time um, that I'm using as a ground cover in here has really spread so much already. So I'm really happy with how it's adjusting to growing season. So I've been working on this honeysuckle that I transplanted out here to grow up over my arbor all season. And it's um, starting to get a little bit out of control. So I'm just trimming them back. And uh, I have a ton of honeysuckle up at the house. So I'm not worried about doing too much um, taking it out. Just want to keep it uh, away from my rhubarb and then um, out of the pathways, really. Okay, yeah, but it'll be pretty. It's, it's just got its first buds on it, it's about to bloom. It'll be pretty when it's all trained up. I am gonna harvest some rhubarb uh, probably tomorrow morning. I already harvested quite a bit and gave it to my daughter-in-law. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wash it, chop it up, and then freeze it for when I have a strawberry harvest and then I can make like rhubarb strawberry jams. I do wanna do a rhubarb barbecue sauce this year. I found a recipe for that that looks fun. I'm pretty sure it's from um, Ann at Farm Girl in the Making. She has some great recipes for preserving. So if you're not following her blog, I definitely recommend going and following it. I really, really enjoy her recipes. Um, and then I often get asked, um, I wouldn't say often, but I got asked recently and I did a video on it, I believe specifically last year on garden maintenance. And uh, so, because I do try to keep a pretty clean garden, tidy, and people ask, they know that I work full time and that I have limited time to, it's not like I'm out here 24 hours a day tending to it. Um, and what does my daily garden maintenance look like? And I would say it's never the same. No two days are the same. So like yesterday, I didn't get out here at all because it rained all day. Um, but typically after morning chores, I'll walk through and I'll just do a look, make sure everything's okay. Do I need to do a morning watering that day? I'll ask myself based on the forecast because that is when I like to water in the morning. So if I need to water, I do it in the morning. Um, and usually while I'm doing that, I'll do a little bit of weed maintenance, not too much, but if I see something, I'll pull it out. Sometimes I come out on my lunch hour just to have lunch out here and I might do a, a similar walkthrough and say, is everything okay? Does anything, do I see anything that needs to be managed? And then, but mainly it's in the evening this hour. 
that I'll get out here after work and then I'll do kind of bigger maintenance activities, more purposeful things, either planting, um, trellising, managing like this, um, and proper weeding, feeding, things like that. So I do see some weeds in my onion bed I need to pull. So it's probably what I'm gonna be doing today out here is just that the kale that was flowering is about done and needs to be cut back. So I'll probably cut back the kale and um, feed that to the chickens and then um, pull some weeds. Oh, looky, the peas that I just threw in here are coming up. Remember when I did that? I said, I'm just gonna throw some peas in the straw bales and see what happens. Look at that. Little peas popping up. That's fun. Just all over randomly. That'll be great. This is the straw bale garden that was treated uh, with Melorionite versus, let me show you the one behind me. Um, get out of the way. The one behind me, twice as big. They were planted one week apart. But I can tell those are so much healthier. The stalks hold the plant up so strong. Um, so I think I've already got proof in my experiment of what I think I'm gonna go with next year. And I'm just gonna do the barn clean out, um, you know, uh, conditioning of my straw bales. It was easy, it was hands off. Um, and those plants look phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. The cucumbers, oh, let's go take a look at those. They're trellising up the, the vine already. Can you see them? He's attached to the straw itself. Isn't that sweet? Here, you go in here and you can attach right here, buddy. So it's this kind of stuff that I do after work in the evenings. Just kind of tend to the plants, things like this that need to be just given a little helping hand. So he's doing great, great. These peppers that I planted together, first blossoms. I always come out and, I don't know if you guys can see them. When my peppers start blooming, I always just tickle them a little bit, give them a little bounce to help them pollinate really good. I don't know if it's needed on all of them. And look, the peas are coming up all in here too. Good pea shoots. So this is the kale that is pretty much all seeded out. Um, now I could let this open up and drop the seeds, which I may with this back one, but this one is covering up my lettuce so my lettuce can't grow. So I'm just gonna cut it back. Feed those to the chickens. I'll show you an example of how much borage self seeds. Borage, 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 all borage, 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 all borage. <laughs> I have some random poppies growing up in here. This is self-seeded lettuce that has dropped its seed. Um, this whole section, I used to have a one of my oak barrels that are up there here, and that's where the borage seed all dropped. And I had another oak barrel over there, and it's a similar situation. So I've already pulled up probably no less than 20 of these. So that's just something that you need to know if you plant borage, which I highly recommend. It is probably my most favorite plant to have in my garden for pollinators. It brings in all the bees. So many bees and butterflies in my garden. So I will never not have borage in my garden, um, but it gets huge. It's a really big plant. So I can't leave all of this here because I won't be able to walk through my garden. So I've, what I've been doing is pulling this out, transplanting it around the property, just so it, cause it'll just naturally self seed itself every year. Similar to poppies, which I'll show you below. I have no idea how this poppy even got here because it was very, very far away from where plants were planted in my garden. Poppies right underneath your feet. There's one more here. And I do not know how it got here because it's probably, well, poppies grew over there. So easily 20 feet from where they were planted. So 
bizarre. But this shows you like weeding. I really haven't been weeding much in my garden. Honestly, my preferred choice is lay down cardboard and throw a pile of wood chips on top of it. <laughs> that is honestly what I almost always do. But I've been a little lazy this season. So every now and then I come out here. And the nice thing about wood chips is they just pull right up. It's not difficult to weed. So I just have to do it more frequently. Probably the worst weeds I get in my garden are baby trees because we do have so many trees on our property that fighting walnuts and mulberry saplings are the worst in my garden. And once those get any decent amount of size, they are so hard to get up all their roots. I'll tell you what, this turned out to be a tremendous success intercropping the corn with the spinach that I was growing. Um, it worked wonderfully. By the time the spinach was done, oh geez, stepped in the ant pile. See, I got ants in my garden this year. Um, what was I saying? That shocked me. Um, it worked wonderfully. They, uh, by the time the spinach was done, the corn's popping up and uh, I will forever do that again. So just an idea of how you can intercrop your plants. That is things like radishes and those early spring crops are wrapping up the next crops coming in behind it. Uh, somebody I mentioned in my last video when I was uh, hooking up my tomatoes that um, I grow sunflowers or was growing sunflowers with my tomatoes next one sunflower against each pole. One thing I didn't mention in that video that I'm going to do right here, this one is not purposely planted, but he's growing super strong. So I'm going to leave him. is I do keep his leaves trimmed up so that he doesn't compete with my tomato plant for light, for aeration, things like that. So as he continues to grow up, I'm just going to keep them pruned back. I'm keeping my lower branches of my tomato plants pruned up so that um, they don't encourage blight growth. And sometimes all I do, I don't know if it's recommended, is I'll just pit, pinch the bottom lower section of the leaf off so that it's not touching the ground. This one's almost ready to tie up. Well, that's it. Hi, baby. Hey. You did not know I was back here? No. Regular everyday management of the garden. Not much. Just peddling, really. That's all I do. What's up? Looks good. Thanks. I was just seeing if you're still filming. I was going to start mowing while dinner finishes. Oh, okay. Yep, I'll stop then. And then maybe if you stick around, you'll see what we're having for dinner. Talk to you guys in a bit. Thank you. 